Great, thank you so much for hosting us in your office here in Juba. You are most welcome. We have traveled a lot through your country in the last eight days, and there's so much of an Indian connection. We went to Bor, we went to Wakobo, we went to Malakal, we went to Kodok, and Yunmis, two Indian battalions, security presence, doctors, veterinarians, education, solar lamps. The Indian connection with South Sudan president is extremely big. Of course, the Indians are not, Indians are not uh, new in our country. They have been here for many years doing business. And so if there is anything that can bring them to our country now, it is OK. They have been very supportive in the uh, UN forces. And so we have seen how they have discharged their, their duties. Now we have the privilege of having uh, met a big, uh, very senior, high-level delegation from, from India. And uh, Indian government has, has pledged to build uh, a mental hospital. In Juba. In Juba. A 40 bed hospital. Yeah. On the security angle, sir, in terms of the two Indian battalions who are present in Juba, of course, but mainly in Bor and Akobo and in Malakal, they've even gone to Kodok. How important is the role of the Indian battalions in UNMIS? Well, so far, uh, I have not had any, any report about misconduct of the Indian uh, soldiers. Uh, what we know is that you know, Indian Army is a very disciplined army, well trained, highly trained. And uh, when they come to the country, we don't expect any problems from their side. So their, 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 their involvement in these operations is significant to us, and we, and we like it. President, it is significant in the areas where they are present. If they can make the people secure enough to either return and continue to build their lives. So the areas where the Indian battalions are, are crucial to moving forward in the peace process. Isn't that correct? Yes. The areas they are there now are the areas that need most the presence of peace among the people, and especially uh, Akobo, because Akobo is a very isolated uh, town, and especially during this war, uh, nobody is there. But uh, it has become a displaced camp, because you know, when the relief food was being taken to Akobo, that manage to gather the people uh, so but it is now time that people should go back to their uh, original homes so that they settle Kobo we visited for a little while and what we are told like you're saying it was pretty much empty maybe even a few months back what we are told now is that there are possibly up to 13,000 people who have come back the NGOs the aid workers are also going back which indicates uh, the security situation is getting better even in that area, which is the only area where the Indian battalion is present, UNMIS is present in I.O. territory. There was no fighting in that area, actually. Uh, since the rebellion started in 2013, uh, our forces never gone to Akobo. They have never reached Akobo. And uh, the whole population rebelled. And so we thought that there was no, no, no need even to, to, go, to bother to go there. Mm. President Keir, apart from the security angle of the Indian peacekeepers, what we have seen on the ground is the connect that they are making with the local people through doctors, through veterinarians, through maybe giving solar lamps to the people of the village. So much so that one of the doctors who treats the cattle has been told 
you cannot go back home to India, you must stay here, we will give you a plot as well. The connect between the peacekeepers, Indian peacekeepers, and the outreach to the people on the ground, that itself is also very important, President. It is important because you know, the Indians, even when they were just business people in South Sudan, they were with, integrating with the people. They just, you know, uh, befriend you and then you stay together. So, for now, the people are in need. The people of South Sudan are in need of so many services. Those who keep cattle, they need uh, medicines for their, for their animals. And then the human uh, beings are also in need of uh, human drugs and so and so on. So the connection is not is not a simple thing. It is that you know in future it will need you know, us to 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 make more you know, efforts to bilaterally to bring our relationship to the highest level. Uh, I always look towards India that you know, they will help us in the implementation of this peace agreement. Because if there is no uh, support from India, we will not make it alone. And the support we need is, is not simple. Say, for example, we need medicines. When we talk about the cantonment areas, where the rebel forces will have to be assembled, where they will be screened and uh, trained, so we need many things for them. Tense. Tents. We, we will be the main uh, shelters and then offices. And then we need uh, food, we need medicines. These are the three main things that we will need. For the water, of course, you know, boreholes can be, can be dug in the same areas. That is no problem. When you're talking about the peace process, President, where do you think South Sudan currently stands? We've seen peace processes in the past fail. This one seems to have brought some optimism on the ground and among all groups. Well, on my side as the head of the government, it was me who signed the agreement. And I told the members of my government all that, you know, this is our agreement and we have to implement it ourselves. <laughs> So that thing gave the opposition, some of them, high hopes that you know, there is going to be peace. This is why they are now in Juba. They are with us in Juba. And uh, everybody came on the 31st of October. They came to Juba here. We celebrated the, the peace agreement. And it was attended by President Omar al-Bashir and and his uh, members of the government. So we believe that this peace will not fail again, like those who, which failed, yes. And in terms of a timetable, do you see, say, what you were talking about, the cantonments being set up, say, by February or it, March? It is, it is, it is laid away. Anyway, it is behind time. Schedule? It is behind schedule, but still we will make it. Are you worried about any other groups who are holding out against peace? Well, there are groups that are holding out against peace. That is the human mentality. There is nothing you, you can do to them. But they will come. If they find that there are no people joining them so that they can fight, they will then say, well, everybody does not want war. They just join them. They will come. Mm. In terms of the international community and the United Nations, there is another mandate that will be renewed 
in March. Uh, what is your need or want from the international community at large and the United Nations mission itself? Well, I don't really need to perhaps the, 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 the timetable of the UN. But what they should always understand is that South Sudan is a sovereign, a sovereign state. And there are things that they always do in our absence. And they put, impose them in the, in the UN mandate, which is not true. This time, if there is a new UN mandate for the forces that are operating in South Sudan, South Sudan should be part of, the, of that agreement. Is there any change that you want in the mandate itself? Because if you look at other regions, other countries in the past, it's moved ultimately from peacekeeping to a stabilization role. At present, it doesn't seem to have reached that stage, uh, the United Nations as, the, as yet, or the, the, so what do you... Well, these people have stopped everything from us. They don't, they don't want to do anything. They say it is a peace mission. A peace mission should have minimum th things to do. Like when the Japanese you know, contingent was in war, they worked. Now your, your, your contingent is giving some services. And so, if it is at that stage, they must do things at their limited resources given to them. But once you know, peace is at attained, there will be nothing called peacekeeping forces. It, it should be for development. So that you know, they give services to the people. And things have changed so much, President, in terms of, uh, say, relations with other countries in the region, mm -hmm. Sudan and South Sudan. Now it seems to have realized that there is a need for both to be together for development, for, for the oil to uh, benefit both countries. both countries. So there has been some kind of a change. There is that change, of course. Uh, there is that change. Sudan with us today is better than it was yesterday. And so we are happy that we will maintain that relation. And the oil is actually for the benefit of everybody. Mm. When you're talking about how you have your vision for, of the country, of how it should proceed, the peace process, and how all institutions should also proceed, you have been reported to have criticized your own military commander, saying that the, the troops are not benefiting because they're not getting food, all the money is not getting. What exactly? is your view of the various institutions in such important institutions under you? In any country, in every country there is maladministration in the institutions. And so the institution of the armed forces is what I was talking about. And I told the generals who are responsible for the army that they are not taking care of the army yeah. and, and we will revisit it again. Uh, I have a, a standing appointment with the generals, the general headquarters there. Again, uh, we've talked about India, how India has been contributing with a people-to-people -people contact in terms of medical help, veterinary help, education. Agriculture is another area where you could possibly benefit from Indian expertise, scholarships of various sort. What else would you possibly need or request from your good friend, India? Well, we, for, the, for, the, for the scholarships, it is something obvious that uh, friendly countries always offer us uh, scholarships. And so, India will not be exceptional to offer us scholarships. India is already in the, in the field of uh, health, helping us in, uh, in, in that field. Agriculture is the, is the most important 
part more than the oil in our country because the oil was supposed to be used to just fuel the agriculture and so that agriculture takes the lead in the economy and Indians have, have, have expertise in, uh, in agriculture. I would not mind if uh, agriculturists are sent to South Sudan. When guns are all silent, they will come and develop our land. We have the land which... Such a rich land. The soil is so rich. You have water, of course, apart from natural resources. India can be, you're saying, exceptionally, can help you exceptionally in certain areas once the guns fall silent. Yes, they will. In, in terms of the peace process, when we talk about your vision again, how are you looking at it overall? Because currently it seems to be the focus is on implementing, say, the first three chapters of the agreement. What about when it comes to building up a national identity of Sudan. What is your vision that all the tribes, no matter what their differences, no matter what the past, there will be a national pride among everybody of South Sudan? How, are you, how is your vision moving towards that? The uh, uh, South Sudan is formed of about 64 ethnic groups. Different, different ethnic groups. These groups know themselves that they belong to this land. What brought them against each other is the conflict. The conflict was directed by some opportunists as and to be a tribal conflict. In the state, it was a power struggle, somebody who wants to take power. When he failed from there, he shifted to, to tribal uh, back, back, backing. And, and that tribal backing has distorted all the the, all the all the relations in the in, between the tribes in South Sudan. I'm confident that if the guns go silent, people will come back to their normal. Previously, when we were fighting, we were fighting for one aim only: that getting uh, a free state of South Sudan. And so, we were one. The minority tribes, the, ma the majority, were all together. And uh, I believe they will come back to that stage. Talking about coming back, you do visualize over time now, if the guns fall silent again, uh, both the people who are internally displaced and people who are refugees in neighboring countries. You do visualize them all coming back. Who will come, will bring them back all. Some people are now coming back yes. from the, from yes. the refuge. Yes. Yes. They are coming back alone. But if the government comes in with the international, with the help of the international community, all the refugees will be repatriated back to South Sudan. And we need them back in South Sudan. Again, your vision, how does it take you towards uh, what's happened in, in the conflict in terms of accountability? How do you visualize that? Do you think there should be something like the South African model or will there be a South Sudanese model? Or how do you progress towards peace in terms of accountability uh, during the conflict? You see, uh, when you put accountability together with peace, they, they may all fail, but if you let the peace lead, then you achieve peace, and then later on you come back for, to account for those who committed crimes during the war. That will be the best for two. 
if you want to do the South African way, you can you can you can you can get it automatically because uh, if peace is there and then it is an individual who will come out to confess publicly that I was the one who did this, 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 this. If that is the way, nobody will be persecuted in absence. They will all come back. But the first thing, the first thing to be done is peace. It does achieve peace. President Kiel, do you have any free time considering how much work you have? If you do have any free time, what is it you do? How important is your family to you? Well, uh, for now I don't have free time. Presume so. But when, I, there, when there is free time, one will have luxury of reading some books. At, free, at your free time you read, you write and all that. What is the message you would like us to take to the people of India and the government of India? Uh, well, to the people of India, I must thank them that they have been in the forefront with us in South Sudan. And I would want them to, to keep that. That friendship should not break. For the government, I would also want the government to increase whatever they have been contributing to our country, uh, they can in increase and they stand with us. And they have now identified themselves as the allies of South Sudan. Because Prime Minister Modi was you know, uh, very friendly to me. I have visited you know, De New Delhi so the solar alliance. Several, several times. And he is good with us. I would want him to, to keep on in that direction. And President Creel, my final question to you. Tell us the story about the Stetson hat. What? Your hat. Why is that a symbol of President Kiel? Well, labor body has as as a symbol to be to be known with. So is there a story behind it? There is no story. <laughs> it is just something I I love to to wear. Mm. Right, President. Thank you so much for giving me us time. Thank you for being such good hosts, and we hope next time we will be as good a host to you when you come to India next. Thank, Thank you, you, President. Thank you very much.